And what about you? This is a part three of our transmission issues associated with this uh, Generation 2 Toyota Hilux Surf Japanese import vehicle. This is the 3 litre KZN 130 engine, big donkey inner, very reliable if you maintain it. It's like everything else. And here we go. If you're watching this video and uh, you have issues with your transmission on a vehicle like this, this is a 1995 uh, Generation 2 25 year old vehicle. Uh, I strongly recommend you look at part 2 and part 3. So by the time this video is uh, made public, I'll leave links in the doobly doo down below somewhere for the other parts and it goes through some basic checks you can do before you can you get to this stage where I'm at at the minute. So where we left it off the last time is we have the ECU out for a quick look to see if we can see anything. So before we take the lid off this, just a wee quick reminder of uh, what I said in part two is ECUs of this uh, era 80s, 90s and early 2000s in Toyotas, uh, well known for problems with electrolytic capacitors. Electrolytic capacitors have a lifespan. They only last so long, so over a period of time, they just dry out and all that. So we have the symptoms of this car, just as another reminder, is we have shifting problems in the transmission. Car runs great and all that. We've been able to do various uh, checks and uh, I definitely think that this is a control issue. The car does shift gear, it does not get overdrive, it never uh, gets into overdrive or fourth gear. Uh, we're able to drive the car manually whenever we disconnect the, uh, the solenoid plug in the gearbox. So we're saying, well I'm thinking that it's a control side issue. Now just before I'm going to tell you something. These ECUs for these Jeeps are like hen's teeth. You can't get them. They're getting so rare because, you know, as I said, this, they have, the components inside them have a shelf life. They have, they have a lifespan. And what a lot of people do is whenever these things come on the market and they're known to work, they get snapped up. And whenever things are rare, the price just goes through the roof. So there's guys looking 400, 500, 600 quid, whatever it is for one of these. And, you know, you have an ECU that may work, but, you know, it's how long you're going to get out of it. So you really need to do uh, a refurbishment. If you're not, uh, you know, it's quite intricate, but I'm looking for a problem here. Uh, first of all, by doing a visual inspection to see if I can, to see if I can find anything. Lid removed with four screws in there. These wee screws here are in this top board. And you need to be careful when you lift it up because there's a ribbon connector and that can be quite fragile. So you can just tease it up and uh, it'll hold itself there. And what we're looking for, we're looking, paying particular attention to these buys here. These ones here. Now, I'm not entirely sure, don't quote me on this, but I think there's a possibility that these MOSFETs are your three switches for your power switches for your solenoid here. So I'm suspecting this area here is your transmission control. So first inspection then, visual, quick visual. There's not really much to see. There's no bulging of the capacitors there. So we're looking for bulging capacitors and there's no bulge in there so okay what do we do now but it zoomed in a good bit uh, i think i've spotted a problem and it's to do with that capacitor there so i'll just get a wee back probe here just to show you that leg of that capacitor is leaking slightly from the bottom and i think that track 
is open circuit, but we'll need to have a wee closer look at it. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this uh, one of these wee cheap microscope jobs by hand here, so it may be a wee bit shaky, but it's just to uh, have a wee look at this on the, uh, the screen here. So we'll get you in that a bit better. Okay, so here we can see the uh, bottom of that capacitor there, and that's where it's, it's leaking out of the bottom of it. So starting that acidic sort of stuff there, that's the electrolyte that's uh, in the dielectric in the, uh, in the capacitor between the two plates. And you can see that is leaked onto the board and it looks very like it's burnt that track. So that track is open circuit there. That is that white thing there is just a marker to signify that's the negative side of the capacitor. And it's starting to eat into this track as well, as you can see. So we've lost that track there, we've lost that, and clearly our capacitor's not much good either. So there's the problem. Hey, we'll get some toys out and get ourselves set up for this repair and get ourselves nice and comfortable. So there we go, we can uh, get a better look at this damage here on this wee, uh, wee screen. So that circle thing there, that's the acrylic coating, the conformal coating, it's melted and uh, so it's melted and made a lovely little wee circle there. And uh, you can see the burning there. And this wee microscope, she's in very, very, very close at the minute, but uh, we'll be able to raise that up later on and uh, there's a wee bit of a zoom on it here, a digital zoom that's as far as it's going to go so I can see where uh, the electrolyte has reacted with the copper and uh, it's it's burnt burnt up there and it's starting to tarnish this one so this this white thing here uh, we were worried about this white thing the paint mark there I doubt where I'll get that off that's like a two pack type uh, job that they're doing that there and I don't think you get you need something really aggressive you need to have to screw I may be able to scrape it off if anything so have we additional light bar here you may notice that's a wee light bar there and that's uh, that's fed from our top down jump starter and uh, that'll light that up for ours so well that we we USB strip if we need it and uh, with a big light above us and uh, you know so it doesn't cause any shadow so I think that's what it's all about you know we're going to do start something like this you need to get get, get a good setup going you know but uh, first things first we'll get these capacitors out and uh, open the array up Okay, all the capacitors are out. We'll give the area, the damage area, a bit of a clean. We'll get that conformal coating off. And uh, we'll see the extent of the damage. And uh, actually, it doesn't look too bad. Actually, not as bad as what I thought. So it's just that it's just that uh, small track to the right there. The looks of it. Mm, it's it's looking great actually. Let me just give that a clean off with distilled water. There. Up my sponge. We'll get a wee bit closer. So here's our uh, 
trace with the capacitors removed we can get a good look at it there's all zoomed in so we can see the break in that trace so we're going to go ahead and try to do a trace repair on this um, so that is a fiberglass pen and we're getting rid of the green paint there the solder mask and uh, yeah that pen nib is 2.5 mil wide and uh, you can see the one six up in the corner there it's about the thickness of that trace so we're trying to get rid of this uh, white paint that's stamped across that trace very carefully with a craft knife uh, it's very thin small blade just in the point there so yeah very intricate work indeed so give another go in there with the fiber pen and a general cleanup isopropyl alcohol and uh, get the area clean ready for soldering so yeah that looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with that yeah right down and that's the capacitor hole is cleaned up very well indeed and uh, no corrosion so that's me applying a wee bit of flux there with a syringe and uh, got a wee drop on there both sides and we're going to go ahead and solder so at this point the it all looks uh, all, all going very well and it's tinning very well but uh, it was after that I stopped uh, filming because it all went pear shaped I tried to bridge that gap with the leg of a resistor and there must have been too much heat required or something but that wee trace just came off the board and uh, it ended up a disaster so I had to do something different Well, a wee while later, and it didn't turn out as well as I would have liked. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to solder in that there. Uh, which is a resistor leg, if it'll focus. And uh, believe it or not, that turned out to be what I think is basically too thick for it. And I had it, I had it soldered in, and, you know, I sort of wasn't happy about it with it. And was mucking about with it a wee bit more and the track started to lift of the board and oh, it just ended up a bit of a disaster to be quite honest with you so I've had to jump it I just jumped it with a jumper wire that red wire there from a component there where it goes on to so I got it in and then it's on the track there uh, not much of the track left to get onto but um, should be all right. So uh, I'll get plenty of acrylic around it so it doesn't vibrate or move about, you know, get her sort of held in place. And, uh, okay. Right. Get the capacitors in now. Right, that's all the, that's all the capacitors back in again there. And uh, we're using uh, low ESR uh, gold cap capacitors there. If I can get you into focus. They're made by Panasonic. That's MR. And, uh, yeah. So, that'll last okay, I think. So, yeah, my only worry is that that red wire there, that trace of power. So, I've put a, a lot of acrylic on it there and uh, hoping that it'll not move about. And then what we'll do is we'll get some of this stuff on it as well and uh, that'll seal her up uh, you know so that'll protect it against uh, moisture and condensation and stuff like that so if that red wire does go open circuit then you know I'll know what it is what I could maybe do is uh, as you can tell I'm not a hundred percent confident with it uh, I would have preferred the wee trace just to be bridged but it is minute it is like in one mil wide you know so the trace runs along and in the into one of them legs of that ribbon connector. I think, uh, what I can tell anyway. And uh, what I could do is bridge it right across. But uh, yeah, we'll spray a bit of that on it. Let it, uh, let it cure and uh, 
see how it goes. So that's easy uh, refitted. That's her back and again. Time to take her for a test run. Well, we're out on a road test, and I'm very pleased to say the car is running brilliant. You can hardly detect a gear change, and it is going into fourth and driving as it should. So we'll do a wee quick test. We'll pull over to the side, and this is the same place as we did it before. So we're in D, and away we go. And there's a gear change. An R gear change. Well, you probably didn't see in there. I've kind of an R gear change. We got her up to speed here. There's an R gear change. That's it in the fourth. No problem at all. And uh, 3,000 revs, 60 miles an hour. And we're coming in there 40 zone. So that was the same uh, stretch of road as we did. That road test before so there was a wee bit of did and show there uh what i ended up doing i took that red wire off again i wasn't happy with it soldered on to the back of the trace it was going to move about it was going to break off so i traced it back uh either side uh luckily enough it went on to a component but the component went through the you know the other side of the board so there's a wee solder spot and i was able to piggyback on the solder spot so it's not three through hole which is not ideal, you know. I'm disappointed that the tracer power didn't go as the way I wanted it to. It wasn't too bad, there was only a, just a slight bit missing of it, as you saw on the microscope. And, uh, you know, I think it was lesson learned. I, mean, I think it was trying to over engineer it a wee bit, it was trying to overdo it, it was trying to put, you know, too much of a conductor uh, to bridge it. I should have just bridged it with a couple of strands of wire, uh, probably would have been grand and it would have, been, would have took five minutes but I ended up you know going back and back and back the trace kept lifting and uh, turned into a bit of a disaster so we've jumped it basically with a bit of wire from uh, you know a soldered point to another solder point and what I've also done was then I've held that wire in place so with a bit of uh, hot glue so that's uh, acting as elastic and uh, so that's so that it won't go anywhere even if it does break off so if it does break off again i'll just go back there and go back there where it was again be no harm done you know if i didn't put this elastic on it i wouldn't want that bit of wire flopping about in that ecu that would maybe be the end of that ecu lucky enough uh you know whenever i saw those symptoms i went straight on to it and uh, it wasn't too bad so that capacitor you know even when I looked at the the back side of it, it was, you couldn't even see any 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 leakage at all it had just you know it was just enough to go onto the board and melt that melt that minute trace that trace repair there like you know for me even with that microscope it was it was just nearly too intricate and uh, that wee trace was like a mill wide you know it was a her a her width wouldn't it maybe even wouldn't have been a mill wide but uh she's repaired and yeah we'll get to the moon yet with the mileage we've on her now so yeah i have been driving it about in manual mode and uh you know so i took i got that an opportunity to get that ecu open and do that repair there so the, an afternoon I wasn't doing anything so that's it um successful repair didn't go as well as I wanted it to uh, you know learning curve for me as well don't normally do uh, intricate like that intricacies like that the component change you know the capacitors change that's a that's a gift you know so uh, that's no big deal that was that's easy that's the easy part once you get the, the holes cleaned and you know a wee bit of solder work on it and all that little jazz so yeah hope you enjoyed that uh, trilogy there and uh, maybe a bit of information if people are having uh, problems with these uh, these kind of jeeps 
the difference that that has made to the the change uh, the gear change there is unreal and of course it now goes in the fourth but uh, you, you just don't you can't even feel the gear change whereas uh, before it was quite aggressive gear change and you know because you're you were raving combination of you were raving very high and you know it was finally throwing it into gear so nothing wrong with solenoids in this car nothing wrong with a valve body nothing wrong with the gearbox it was a wee tiny tiny wee her with trace and uh, those capacitors which basically have done their job can't fault them they have done their job they have went way over their uh, shelf life so uh, those ones I put in uh, are high end capacitors there uh, just uh, if you maybe noticed there was one capacitor I did not change and that was a, a bipolar it says on it BP so that uh, is a non polarized capacitor and uh, I didn't have one if I do source one I'll maybe go back in and uh, change that but to be quite honest with you I think we'll see how it goes you know repairs good works well I'm pretty happy it'll, it'll last it's not as good as I wanted it to be there's a load of uh, conformal coating on it and uh, acrylic so that'll uh, keep any condensation out of it and uh, that's been refreshed there and uh, yeah okay hope you enjoyed it all thanks for watching maybe you got something out of it and all the best and bye bye